The Pokemon franchise is and always has been loaded with rare and elusive Pokemon that you can only obtain from events. Within the current generation of Pokemon, you can directly connect to the internet from within your home to download these special Pokemon, or obtain a code card from GameStop or other participating location. But back in my Pokemon Prime, Nintendo didn't always distribute Pokemon over the internet or give you a redeemable code. You had to manually travel to GameStop or Toys R Us during a usually very limited time period and download the special Pokemon from within that location. Oftentimes, the Pokemon that were distributed commemorated real-world happenings such as the release of a new movie or the launch of a new game. These events ran for years across the entire DS generation of Pokemon and were generally well received on account of their frequency and consistency. However, over the many years these kinds of events existed, there was one time in particular that a certain event Pokemon was distributed, when in fact that Pokemon shouldn't have existed at all. 2009 at Nintendo's flagship store, Nintendo World, the venue decided to host a launch party for Pokemon Platinum version, which is something they're known for around big game releases. In order to drum up anticipation of the event, a promotional poster was released, highlighting some of the features and activities the event offered. It all seems pretty straightforward and obviously would attract interest from people all around the area. Take notice of no mention of any kind of mystery gift Pokemon. So now on the actual day that this launch party was supposed to happen, new flyers went up around the Nintendo World building, now promising an exclusive mystery gift Pokemon. Well that makes sense, right? Wouldn't Nintendo want to release a special Pokemon to commemorate this event? So upon opening up your game and downloading the mystery gift, you actually could receive a Pokemon. Except, it's actually nothing Nintendo authorized and it's highly offensive. So this is the infamous racist Gengar that was illegally distributed to players through the Mystery Gift channel at this Nintendo World event. What makes this Pokemon racist is the fact that all of its customizable features are references to African American stereotypes, though arguably its infamy comes from the fact that it was given out to children at a Nintendo sponsored event, so the whole situation is rather disturbing. Unfortunately, Nintendo distributed event Pokemon during this generation through DS carts, which acted as the server themselves. Simply put, the ROMs to these carts were leaked and the data from them can easily be edited, making it possible for anyone to distribute whatever they want. Apparently, there were at least two reported mystery gift Wi-Fi signals going around, and that was enough to prompt Nintendo to investigate. However, only one of these signals was actually distributing Gengar. According to some online research, turns out, the other signal was distributing an Eevee for a short period of time, in conjunction with a completely unrelated fan event. On the same webpage, it's also revealed that the fake flyers hung up around Nintendo World were also completely unrelated to Gengar and were intended to be used for this Eevee event as well. It was just a coincidence that both unofficial distributions happened at the same venue. Reports say that the culprit behind the Gengar distribution was a rotund, bearded, generally unkept individual who was dressed as a Team Rocket grunt. It shouldn't come as a surprise that he was escorted out of the venue and promptly arrested by police. Now, this picture of a James cosplayer is often connected to articles of the event with claims that he was the guy distributing the Gengar, but he doesn't completely match the previous description, and there's been some discrepancy between the James outfit and the reports of an actual Team Rocket grunt outfit. Not to mention, I found this post in the comments of a related article. Apparently this guy is the James cosplayer, named James Craven, who states that he was not the one distributing the Gengar, but that it was another individual. Considering this person doesn't have a beard at all, and no one else would probably make a case defending a random cosplayer, his story seems to check out. As you can imagine though, Nintendo was not happy about this, and issued a statement to attendees as follows. Apparently they even went over the in-store intercom with a similar warning not to download any mystery gifts. Unfortunately, there were still many people who downloaded this Pokemon, whether that was through curiosity or by accident, but as you can imagine most of them are probably gone now. Because first, it's obviously not an official Nintendo product, but two, it's racist and I can't imagine many people who had it actually wanted to keep it around. Despite this, there is actually an interest and rarity factor surrounding this Pokemon. While it is horribly racist and like Nintendo said, could damage your game, some people seem to be interested in it for its collectability and history. If anything, it just shocks me that someone would have an idea that twisted and use a limited time event space to distribute it. The whole thing is kinda eerie and I'm surprised this kind of thing didn't happen more often to be honest. 
But there you go. Next time someone tries to make a statement about Jinx, just tell them the unsettling story of the fake mystery gift Gengar.